Praise the Lord. Good evening. Good to see you all this evening. Let's uh, turn our Bibles to the book of Amos, Amos Grandam, Mudu Adhyayam. Andramu Uttara Pratyutram Chadukunam, Padihin Vachnalun Tunne. There are 15 verses. Let's read these verses responsively. The book of Amos, chapter 3, verses 1 to 15. Let me begin verse 1. Mother Twachin Chautnanu, March Marti Chadukunam, Amos Grandam, Mudu Adhyayamu, Mother Twachinam Ninchi, Padihin, Anni Vachnalu, Uttara Pratyutram Chadukunam. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Will a lion roar in the forest when they, he hath no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he have taken nothing? Verse 5. Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth when no gin is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord hath not done it? Verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. The lion hath roared, will, who will not fear? The Lord God hath spoken, who can but prophesy? Verse 9, publish in the palaces of Ashur and in the palaces in the land of Egypt and say, assemble yourself upon the mountains of Samaria and behold the great tumults in the midst thereof and the oppressed in the midst thereof. For they know not to do right, saith the Lord, who store up violence and robbery in their palaces. Verse 11, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, an adversary there shall be even round about the land, and he shall bring down thy strength from thee, and thy palaces shall be spoiled. Thus saith the Lord, as the shepherd taketh out of the mouth of the lion two legs or a piece of an ear, so shall the children of Israel be taken out that dwell in Samaria in corner of the bed and in Damascus in a couch. Verse 13, Hear ye and testify in the house of Lord, saith the Lord God, the God of hosts, that in the day that I shall visit the transgression of Israel, on him, I will also visit the altars of Bethel, and the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. Verse 15. And I will smite the winter house with the summer house, and the houses of ivory shall perish, and the great houses shall have an end, saith the Lord. Let's pray and look to the Lord, shall we? Loving Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to come to thy precious word. Lord, who are we that, like no other people on the earth, you've given us your word, you've given us, Lord, uh, thy precious, living, abiding, eternally settled word to us, that we may know your ways, Lord, that we may know you and seek you, that we may seek you and seek good, Lord, and uh, that we may fear you and walk with you. Who are we, Lord, that you love us so much, that uh, you're willing to warn and speak to your people, Lord, that we may, Lord, be built up by you, that our lives may have Christ be formed so much that we would see things the way you see, that our hearts would beat the way your heart beats. Father, I pray for myself and each one of us that your word would have free course in our lives. Speak to us, Father. Thank you for this time. 
unworthy as I am, speak through me to me, to each one of us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. If you ask a teenager what is meant by Amos, he would say, add me on to Snapchat. That is the acronym for Amos in the, in the social media savvy world that we live in. Uh, that's the more known thing to them than what the book of Amos says, or even that there is a book called Amos. I hope we are not in such a mind frame when we are coming to the book of Amos. And uh, also a, a thought process that you and I might think um, that we cannot get anything. Forget about relevancy. As I was uh, studying this book and uh, learning for myself, I was blown away by the riches that are there in this book. And uh, I just thank God for the way that the Lord is speaking uh, through this book to our lives. And uh, um, so, Amos Grandam Anedi Manam Dhyanin Stan Kochamu. దేవునియొక్క వాక్యము మరి అది మన జీవితాలకి సరిపడిందే కాదు కానీ సమృద్ధి అయింది లోతైనది మరి ఎన్నో సంవత్సరాల క్రితమే రెండు వేల దాదాపు ఏడు వందల యాభై సంవత్సరాల క్రితమే రాయబడినప్పటికీ కూడా మరి నేటికి మన జీవితాలకి ప్రభావితం చేయగలిగే మరి లోతైన విషయాలు కలిగిన పుస్తకంగా మరి దేవుని యొక్క వాక్య ధ్యానం ద్వారా మనం గమనించవచ్చు Today, uh, I would be kind of making a bit of unsettling and uh, uncomfortable statements as well. I mean, of course, God's word is in such a way that it would make us become uncomfortable as we desire to have God speak to us, as we desire that God would um, make us all that he long us to become, we have to get uncomfortable. And that was my portion as well, as I was studying and preparing and receiving from the Lord. Uh, the book of Amos is going to open up a, a number of questions, and particularly in chapter 3, one question that we come, or oh, there are a number of questions that we have read. If you have tracked down in the first uh, nine verses or so, you and I, uh, verse eight, first eight verses or so, you and I would have come uh, across a number of questions. Interestingly, these questions are in the language. Some of them are uh, integrated with uh, uh, the background which, with which Amos comes from, the herdsman that he is. And so he gives this animating pictures of wanting us to capture what God wants us to and what God's people at that time had to be captivated with. And so, Amos Grandam lo, Mudo Adhyam lo, Mother Tenimid Vachna lo ne, Dada pu manaki, Panindaninchi Padnalu, Prashnal Kanpistai. Andulo, Mari Devudu, Manajivtal ki, Aina Cheyu Krielu, Aina Chuchu Vishyalu, Marenta Gambir Mainuo, Tana Prajal Adinalo, మరితాన ప్రజల ఏంటన్న నీవు నేను ఈ దినాల్లో జ్ఞాపకం పెట్టుకుంటాకి గ్రహించటానికి మరి తన యొక్క పశువుల కాపరిగా ఉంటూ ఉన్న ఆ యొక్క అనుభవాన్ని ఆధారం చేసుకుని అందులో ఆ ప్రశ్నలను పుట్టినట్టుగా ఆ యొక్క చిత్రీకరణ మనకి కనిపిస్తుంది సో యాజ్ ఐ బిగిన్ దిస్ చాప్టర్ ఇట్స్ ఎస్ వెరీ ప్రొఫౌండ్ చాప్టర్ సమ్ ఆఫ్ అస్ మై హ్యావ్ కమ్ అక్రాస్ దిస్ వర్డ్స్ now and then when we talk about walking with god in amos chapter 3 verse 3 can two walk together except they be agreed mudo vachanam lone amos grandham lo sammatimpakunda iddaru koodi nadutura it actually is going to have a focused light on our walk with god and so was it for the israelites that their walk with god is being examined uh, for themselves, for their own benefit. And uh, as I faced that question in my own prayerful preparation, I was far from the reality of what God wants me to see. 
as I began to introspect myself, how is my walk? How is my walk with God? Or how is your walk with God? As you think through with me, often our thoughts would go, not so bad is usual response. Not so bad because I'm reading my Bible. Not so bad because I'm having my quiet time. Not so bad because I'm a, I'm one who worships God regularly. I'm the one who goes to the house of God regularly. Not so because I go for morning and evening service. And uh, not so because that I go for even prayer meetings and uh, I know the word of God in and out. I know the gospel. And uh, in fact, I not so because I even preach the gospel. So many of these things can revolve around our introspection when we think about how our walk with God is. But when we look at what God is trying to show to the children of Israel, you and I might think that uh, we are alien to what uh, Amos is showing to the children of Israel and the sin that they were in. But in fact, we have no, not much difference in our state of life in affairs, in uh, our world, as opposed to the children of Israel. Mari Amos Grandam lo mana yaka naraka e rakanga undi ane prashna mana jyutal kweskuna pudu bane undle devan vakin chautnan pradhan cheskuntnan devan aradistu nanu devan sanidik veltu nanu ude sainkala paradhan kweltu nanu and matrame kaka mari devunini and suvartha neri gainto satsamundalo jivistnanu and suvartha gitarlo prakatistnanane anekamayan allo chilman kravach. Aite. Adinala Israel Prajalu, Yantaga Devuni Per Kaliganapati, Var Jivistuna, Paristitulu, Varuntuna, Varatmi Juta, Yantaga Devuni Doranga on Nayo, Mari Devu Vark Chupinche, Vishalu, Adanches Kuntonte, Manjutal Bosha and the Vityas and Ledan on Coach. Ite, Mari Mudo Adyamu, Nalugu Padalo, Manam Adanches Coach. I want us to have us capture this chapter 4 in these four words that Amos uh, chapter 3 is going to bring to us. The first one is walk. In the first three verses, we come to this key word called walk, examining our walk with God. And uh, it begins by choosing and then followed by walking. And uh, God says that uh, hear this word the Lord had spoken against you. O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for your iniquities. God sees our lives and iniquities not like how we see our lives. In the sense, uh, God has a very high calling for his people. We usually have this tendency of uh, horizontally measuring up ourselves as opposed to viewing from what God is seeing our lives in the motives that we have, in the big picture, in the realm of influence that we, we have from our lives to those that we are living around. And so God is saying to the children of Israel that I have chosen you of all the families of the earth that to be brought into this high calling and to be not only brought under this choosing but also walking with God. Mari Devudu, Tana Prajalanu, Ayan Yenniki Cheskunadi, Unnathamayana Pilputta to Ayana Airparchkuni, Ayana to Nadiche Variga, Mari Undalan Chepi, Ayana Tana Prajalan Airparchkunaranta. These same Israelites uh, are. We, we saw in the chapters before the judgments that God was pronouncing, first and foremost to the neighboring cities or neighboring uh, countries, and then zeroing in on the children of God and even the neighbor that is Judah. And more importantly, as the message that Amos was given was to go preach and prophesy onto this northern kingdom, the kingdom of Israel, which was being ruled by Jeroboam, right? As we saw in chapter 2, there was this beginning of all the ways in which 
God's name is being profaned and the worship of God is being profaned. And uh, in chapter 2, verses 7, we saw that. And verses 8 and 9, we saw that. God has this accusation that God's people are the cause for his name to be profane, for his sanctuary to be profane. And so, that's a high charge on God's people. And uh, may we come to recognize and see how that high charge is related to our lives. Devudu, Tana Prajala in Israel, Patla, Aina Tiskochina Tirpulu, Tana Chutu Untana Ne, Dajalpai Tirpulu Prakatinchina Tadupari, Tana Prajala Untana Yuda, Tarura, Mermukinga Amosu, Uttara de Uttara Raja Mountain, Israel, Desham Pai, Maripravachana Purkumena Mata, Sandeshamu Tirpu, Andin Chinimitamai, and a Pampampa Badna Pudu, Tana Prajala in Israel chasing at Papamanu, and a Batabail chase to Tana Namamu, Dushna Palo Gritiga, Tana Sanidi, and a Taneka Gruhamu, Taneka Ilu, Dushna Palo Gritiga, where Juta Luntanani, Mari Avidamaina Aropana, Deunyaka Dasinidwara. Mari Tana Prajalapai Arupim Pubanatam and Chusam. As we see, these are the four words that are captured in this chapter three. So God is saying that how is it that I have chosen you and uh, have brought into this covenant agreement? In verse three we see that can two people walk together except they be agreed, brought into this covenant? As uh, in the language of the travelers, when two people are walking, uh, especially in our uh, India, uh, we maybe you and I might have come across these journeys that we take. Often, when we are seated in a train, we would talk to the neighbors and say, oh, where are you going? And then we open up our conversations and figure out if they are going to the same destination. Then uh, we kind of mingle more and interact more. And uh, if they are not going to the same destinations, we might say hi, bye, and then kind of maintain our distance, right? So is it that there is this covenant that God had brought these people of God into, so much so that he wants to walk with them. Not that they want to walk with him, which is what should have been, but he wants to walk with them. The God Almighty who made them, of all the peoples of the earth, he picks them that he says, I want to specially walk with you. You know, when I think about that, I remember how uh, uh, the only grade where my father spent a little extra time trying to uh, kind of give me um, a counsel in, in the seventh grade, I remember in my quarterly exams, I happened to fail one or two subjects uh, and uh, it turned out uh, that as I came for that Dasara vacation or whatever and uh, after my dad took me out to the shopping and brought me back, he knew the report card, he knew what was happening and then he took me out for a walk and he started to talk to me, opening his heart and said, oh you are the eldest son and uh, if you are going to maintain this record, what would it be for your brother and sister? Uh, who look up to you. And uh, it was a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. He took me out for a walk. And so is it with God. When God wants to walk with us, when God wants to speak to us, when God is warning to the people of Israel here, He wants to have His heart out. And uh, that is what He is remembering in choosing them and wanting to walk with them. Like no other family on the earth, He chose them. And he wants to walk with them. And uh, in fact, he delivered them from the bondage of Egypt, right? In verse 1 we read, I brought you up from the land of Egypt and uh, to walk with you, to have you be my people. And you know, as a result of that, what were they doing? They are dealing, I mean, the children of Israel in general have this reality, this sad reality that they have rejected the poor oppressed the needy and sold them as slaves, having been delivered from slavery themselves, here is it that these God's people are not even bothered about the voiceless, poor and needy. And you know, as I was introspecting my own life, I was also thinking, 
oh i am as far as uh, as far as i am i am not doing all this right you and i are not so much uh, so hard hearted that we kind of reject the poor or or uh, shut the needy or sell them as slaves like how the israelites were but the fact is when you and i look around in the in the in the state and in the country that you and i live in and the kind of things that are happening right around our lives uh, it should not be shocking to you just if we open up our eyes that right before our eyes there is a redefining of marriage right before our eyes there is a redefining of what life is when life is to be regarded as life as opposed to uh, as opposed to valuing life where god says i am the one who knit you in my mother's womb and instead we live in a society in a people group where life is not regarded as life and more of a choice and we live around people where there is a redefining of what is the purpose and uh, what is prosperity and there is a redefining of what we need to trust this is the kind of society you and i live in and it it is it will be a real um, closed eye approach if you and i think you and i are living in a godly society you and i are living in a country which is called after or which has christian foundations and so when we think about that those homeless those poor and those needy i'm not calling these out just to say that tomorrow you have to go out and start looking out for the homeless people and bring them into your home i'm not calling it out to say that you and i have to go go for social justice and stand with placard or something like that but there is a real difference that god wants you and i as god's people to be making and being aware and vigilant i'll come to how god would want us to respond to his word but take note that just as the children of israel were you and i are living in a godless society where homeless people poor and needy are utterly being shut and of course being brought under a lot of slavery of various things into their own lives and so when you and i let god speak his word it is going to bring to us how he wants us to respond is something that was eye opening and that is a blessing for our life so let me move on so the first word that i was introducing is god wants to open up his heart so that you and i might know his heart might feel his heart and respond how his heart responds when god sees the poor and needy being shut his heart responds not like yours and mine his heart responds to the voiceless and to the poor and needy much different than you and i would respond and that's why he called his people to walk with him to begin to let his heart become our heart to begin to let his eyes become our eyes and so he calls us to take note of our walk how is our walk with him and mari devudu tana prajalanu pilichinappudu tana hrudayanni terichi tana hrudaya lotulu మనం పరిశీలించి ఆయన హృదయం వల్లే మన హృదయం స్పందించాలి ఎప్పుడైతే ఇస్రాయల్ ప్రజలు మరి ఎంతో దయనీయ స్థితిలో ఉంటున్న వారిని లేక మరి నిస్సహాయ స్థితిలో ఉంటున్న వారిని వారిని బానిసలుగా అమ్మి వారికి నీతి న్యాయాలు జరిగించక ఉంటూ ఉన్న వారి అప్రభావం లేని జీవితాలని ఆయన పిలుస్తూ ఆయన అంటున్నాడు నేను మిమ్మల్ని ఏర్పరచుకున్న అది నాతో నడిచి నా హృదయాన్ని తెలుసుకుని నా హృదయ లోతుల ద్వారా మీ హృదయము అలాగే స్పందించాలని కదా అని చెప్పి అందుకోసమే కదా మిమ్మల్ని ఏర్పరచుకున్నాను పిలుచుకున్నాను అయితే మీరు బానిసల వలె ఉంటూ ఉన్న ఆ ఐగుత్తు నుంచి మిమ్మల్ని రప్పించి ఈ దేశానికి ఈ వాగ్దాన దేశాన్ని నడిపిస్తే మరి విధవరాండ్రు మరి అటువంటి మరి పూర్ పీపుల్ అటువంటి వారిని వారికి నాశనము కలగ చేయు రీతిగా వారిని బానిసలుగా అమ్మే దయనీయ స్థితిలో మీ మీ నివసించుచున్న ప్రదేశం ఉంటూ ఉన్నదని ఆరోపణ వారిపై తీసుకుని వస్తూ ఉన్నారు కనుక వారి నడక ఎట్లా ఉంది అని పరీక్షించుకోమన్నట్టుగా 
దేవుడు ఆమోస్ట్ ద్వారా ప్రకటిస్తూ ఉన్నాడు ఈ ప్రవచన మాటలు అపార్ట్ ఫ్రమ్ ద వాక్ గాడ్ ఈస్ ఆల్సో బ్రింగింగ్ టు దేర్ అటెన్షన్ ద విట్నెస్ హీ ఈస్ బ్రింగింగ్ టు దేర్ అటెన్షన్ ద విట్నెస్ వై వుడ్ ఐ కాల్ ఇట్ ఎస్ విట్నెస్ రైట్ రైట్ ఫ్రమ్ వర్స్ ఫోర్ దెర్ ఆర్ టూ టూ సెట్స్ ఆఫ్ క్వశ్చన్స్ దట్ గాడ్ ఈస్ ఆస్కింగ్ టూ క్వశ్చన్స్ అబౌట్ లయన్ టూ క్వశ్చన్స్ అబౌట్ బర్డ్స్ అండ్ టూ క్వశ్చన్స్ అబౌట్ our warning and so i won't go into much detail you can see them and i want you to get an idea of what these questions are he's using his own background's language as a herdsman he knows what it is for a lion to roar as a bird as a herdsman he knows what it is for a bird to fall for the snare and so what amos is asking is a rhetorical question the answer is no to more, all of these questions when a lion roars in the forest would he do so when he hath no prey no the lion is going to roar only after he has a prey if you see any lion roaring before the prey he doesn't even going to catch anything if you don't have if you have not seen that go to the animal planet or uh, why uh, big cat diary or whatever you'd see it sneaks in and uh, it makes it move very quietly to get on to that prey right and so is it that it's after getting the prey that this lion begins to roar and uh, it is going to roar to make a point that it had it had caught something that is the point it is making it had got something so is god when god is speaking out roaring as we read in verse 7 surely the lord god sorry verse 8 the lion hath roared who will not fear the lord god hath spoken who can but prophesy god had caught as though it is like a red handed the children of israel in the injustice and in the unrighteousness that was flowing in the land and he says you my people have chosen you as we read in amos chapter 5 verse 24 let judgment run down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream this is why i have chosen you but your land is filled with injustice and unrighteousness is that why i have called you is that why i have been wanting to walk with you and so these are witnesses that god is bringing as a charge against god's people can a bird fall in the snare upon the earth where no gin is for him the bird is not going to be trapped apart from a snare or a trap right we see that sin is trapping sin traps people and a trap is not kept till a bird is caught right that's the second question so is it that the sin of these people had trapped them and so these questions are more of a rhetorical questions that he's saying no 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 so is it that god has witnessed their sin and he's pronouncing upon them what he's seeing and you know god's people like you and i needs to have god's eyes and god's heart to see what god is seeing and at times my life and our lives are far from what god sees you and i might be in our own world going to our church our work our family dealing with our own things thinking our lives are actually in this nice walk that god had called me to but the fact of the kind of walk that god calls us is to know his heart and to live out his heart i'll come to how we have to respond don't get me wrong in wanting you to quickly jump out and do something about the homeless or anything for that matter that's not what god is asking us let's move on the second word we see is witness and thirdly i forgot about the 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 warnings shall a trumpet be blown in the city and people not be rest- afraid shall there be evil in the city and the lord hath not done it now here is another uh, interesting uh, question is not god responsible for the evil that's what god is asking sometimes uh, it's like putting a mouth in a, uh, 
putting some words into the mouth of a skeptic and saying see god is saying i am responsible for the evil that i that is happening in the world that's not what god is saying if there is a catastrophe that god allows god is the one who allowed it in that in that sense actually history would explain israelites were bought under let's turn quickly just a quick reference back to first kings chapter uh, 14 briefly uh, very quickly we'll go back to first kings chapter 14 verse 23 to 29 is when jeroboam the same king jeroboam the same king son of joash is ruling uh, in israel and uh, before that the children of israel were brought under much affliction verse 26 first king chapter 14 verse 26 we read and the lord saw the affliction of israel that it was very bitter the children of israel were were treated and afflicted by king of syria in chapter 13 verse 22 we read israel king of syria oppressed israel all the days of jehosa jeho yeah has and so their affliction was so bitter god says and he brought out a deliverer as in the form of jeroboam who actually was evil yet he delivers and he rules 41 years and in that there is much prosperity god allowed a situation where they were brought under much affliction and god says You know why that was allowed? Do you think God is not responsible for the catastrophe that he allows in the affliction that he allows and he calls back to Amos chapter 3 verse 6 shall there be evil in a city and the Lord hath not done it is not God sovereign able to orchestrate affliction when there is sin that's the question he says and then the other one is if there is a, a trumpet being blown there is an expectancy of a war so is it that god is bringing forth this warning which is the next word that i want you to take note of in amos chapter 3 the other word that god is bringing to us verse from verse 6 onwards and 7 particularly he says surely the lord god will do nothing but he revealeth his secret unto his servants the prophets mari devudu aina తన ప్రజలైన ఇస్రాయేల్ పట్ల నడక విషయంలో వారి జీవితాల్లో ఉంటున్న పాపం విషయమై సాక్ష్యం విషయంలో వారి జీవితాలకి రాబోతూ ఉన్న తీర్పు విషయమైన హెచ్చరిక విషయంలో ఆయన ప్రకటన చేయి దేవుడిగా ఉంటూ ఉన్నాడు ఇస్రాయేల్ ప్రజలు సిరియా రాజు అయిన హజాయల్ ద్వారా వారు ఎంతో మరి బాధింపబడినప్పుడు జెరోబయాం అనే రాజు ద్వారా వారికి విడుదల కలిగినప్పటికీ ఆ వారికి వచ్చిన ఆ యొక్క అభివృద్ధిలో ఆ పరిస్థితిని దేవుడే అనుమతించారని వారు మర్చిపోకూడదని ఆయన హెచ్చరిస్తూ ఉన్నాడు అంత మాత్రమే కాక ఆయన తీర్పు రాబోయే ముందు ఆయన హెచ్చరిక కూడా తన ప్రజలకు ఇచ్చే దేవుడుగా ఉంటూ ఉన్నాడు ఆయన చేయబోయే కార్యాలు మరి రా తీసుకుని రాబోయే తీర్పులు ఆయన నిశ్చయంగా తన ప్రవక్తల ద్వారా బయలుపరిచే దేవుడుగా ఉంటూ ఉన్నాడు అండ్ సో హీ బ్రింగ్స్ దిస్ వార్నింగ్ before the calamity and the judgment that or the wrath that is going to come in verses 7 onwards uh, he says god is going to reveal the judgment and he is going to roar so that people may know that there is an impending calamity and a judgment that is coming and then go about looking at from verses 9 he says not only to the people of israel but let this be published that everybody else would know that god is warning about the judgment to the palaces of ashod and the land of egypt that is in philistia and in egypt let they know so that even god's people would be aware and the neighbors would be aware that god is a god who judges sin and who is not like any other god who overlooks sin and lets injustice and unrighteousness thrive in a land this is not a kind of god who's made out of human hands who can just overlook sin and let sin triumph this is the holy one of israel 
who deals with sin head on and judges sin. And he wants enough to publish. And he says the reason as well in verse 10 we see, For they know not to do right, saith the Lord, who store up violence and robbery in their palaces. They have looted the poor and have made those spoils to be filled in those palaces and in the rulers and authorities. And that's why we see in verse 11, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, an adversary there shall be even round about the land, and he shall bring down thy strength from thee, and thy palaces shall be spoiled. And so there is a coming wrath on those that are responsible and even on the people of God. They will be brought under the wrath of God as in the form of a judgment and they will be taken captive by a nation much more stronger than Syria. That is the Assyrian nation, right? We are looking in the Bible study how the Assyrian nation invaded Israel and took them captive. They just add this limited affliction from the Syrian nation. But beyond that came the Assyrian Empire and the invasion where they were totally overwhelmed and that country remained no more as a country. That was God obliterating in this wrath that was coming. And he is pronouncing it right here in chapter 12, 3 verse 12, uh, verse 13, uh, sorry, verse uh, 11 we see that there is an adversary or an enemy, there shall be even round about the land. He came and seizes and he shall bring down thy strength and thy palaces. The Assyrian advancement took them as spoils and took away. And uh, in the midst of that, God is speaking through, through Amos in this animated way, how the lion as an enemy is going to come and snatch Israel and uh, is going to just save almost a little of a remnant. And that is, just as a lion is taking away a lamb, the shepherd comes and tries to take away a piece of legs or a piece of a ear. So is such a little remnant that would be spared. Much more that everything is going to be destroyed. God is bringing his wrath. And he testifies that. In fact, in verse 14, he says, His wrath is going to come upon and visit the altars of Bethel. This is the, this is the calf gods that uh, Jeroboam happened to raise in Bethel as an altar, as a false worship, as against the people of Israel going to Jerusalem, being invited by Hezekiah and the, Jerusalem, uh, the kings of Judah, that Jerusalem is the place of worship to divert them. They come and Jeroboam raises up these altars in Bethel as a false gods and worship. And uh, God says that he would smite uh, that altar and their particular houses. Now, if this is the outline, I want you to actually take note of what God wants us to take home this uh, evening in the kind of walks that God wants us to have before which we would look at what are the kind of walks that God doesn't want us to have? Not the walks that God wants. These are the ones first and foremost. And this is where I was mentioning that my walk and your walk with God ought to be brought under scrutiny. And in the light of God's word, you and I would see that it is very possible that our walks can be one of these at any point of our time. But they would do ఆ నాలుగు విషయాలు మరి ఆయన నడక తన ప్రజలైన ఇస్రాయల్ యొక్క నడక సాక్ష్యము హెచ్చరిక ఆయన ఉగ్రత మరి సిరియా దేశం ద్వారా కంటే అసిరియా అనే గొప్ప రాజ్యం ద్వారా వారు ఇంకా దేశం కింద ఉండకుండా లయమయ్య రీతిగా ఆయన ఉగ్రత అలాగే బేతేల్ అనే ఆ మరి ఆ యొక్క దేవతల యొక్క బలిపీఠాలని పడగొట్టి ఆయన యొక్క ఉగ్రత వారిపై రాణించుచున్నాడు అని ఆయన ప్రకటిస్తూ ఉన్నట్టుగా దాదాపు నలభై సంవత్సరాల తదనంతరం అమోస్ యొక్క ప్రవచనం నెరవేర్పుగా మరి అసీరియా రాజ్యం వచ్చి ఇస్రాయేల్ దేశం ఇంకా దేశం కింద ఉండకుండా వారు బానిసలుగా కొనిపోబడ్డారు ఇట్ ఈస్ జస్ట్ ఫార్టీ మోర్ ఇయర్స్ ఏమస్ ప్రొఫెసైడ్ దట్ కమింగ్ రాత్ ద డిస్ట్రక్షన్ పాన్ ఇజ్రాయల్ నో వ్యాస్ వీ లుక్ అట్ ఆల్ దిస్ 
మరి ఇవి చూస్తున్నప్పుడు మన జీవితాల్లో దేవునితో నడక ఎలాగో ఉండాలి దేవునితో నల నడక ఎలా ఉండకూడదు మన నడక అనేది మనం పరిశీలించి మనం త్వరితంగా ముగింపులోనికి వెళ్దాం ద కైండ్ ఆఫ్ వాక్ దట్ గాడ్ డజంట్ వాంట్ అస్ టు హ్యావ్ ఈస్ నాట్ ఎ డీరేల్డ్ వాక్ జెరోబామ్ ఈస్ ద వన్ హూ డీరేల్ దెమ్ ఫ్రమ్ వర్షిపింగ్ ద ట్రూ గాడ్ టు లెటింగ్ దెమ్ బి డైవర్టెడ్ టేక్ ఎ a track or be derailed to worship these false gods many times you and i have a subtle derailing and a deviation from the focus of worshiping the true god it just has to be like this that something or somebody becomes more important than god that's it you and i can be deviated from giving our pure devotion to god to just being sidelined and derailed and jeroboam is a classic example he not only wanted to save his position and his people to be under his dominion for which sake he wanted to establish a false god and a false worship he derailed the people of israel towards worshiping these idols which have no sense of justice which have no understanding or no giving of righteousness so was the re- so was the reality of injustice and unrighteousness flowing like a river in this land and isn't that the same in our in our days in our country where there is a room for ungodliness and unrighteousness in injustice to flow right in the land that you and i live and uh, that is not the kind of walk that god wants god's people to have not a delayed walk you know sometimes you and i might be following christ you know how you and i would follow christ we would follow him from afar off peter did that in he wants to follow christ he said i will follow him even to death so is it that you and i would say in luke chapter 22 after denying our lord to save his own skin in verse 54 we see and that before he denied the lord to save his own skin we see how he was following luke chapter 22 verse 54 then took they him that is our lord jesus christ and led him after the disciples were dispersed and brought him into the high priest home lucas var 22 54 vachanalo petru elagaithe venukobadina reetiga vembadistunnadu anta ela vembadistunnadu venukobadina reetiga and uh, this is what peter was doing and brought him into the high priest house and peter followed afar off peter atla vembadistunadu venakala ekado undi dooram dooranga yesayana vembadistunnadu mana nadaka yesaya tho untunda yesaya venakala ekado nadustunnama at times we need to recognize that there is this backsliding just a little slowness you don't need to walk as fast as god is walking because if we walk as fast as god is walking you and i are going to end up in trouble so better walk a little slowly you are walking behind him you are following him that's okay right so was peter doing so for which he wept bitterly he wept bitterly that slow delayed walk caused him to deny his lord peteru venaka venaka badi nadche peteru ఆయన ఎవరో తెలియదు అనే స్థితిలోనికి వచ్చిన కారణం చే ఆయన మిక్కిలి ఏడ్చినట్టుగా తదనంతరం మనం చూస్తున్నాం నీ నా జీవితంలో మరి అటువంటి వెనుకబడిన నడక మన జీవితాల్లో ఉండకుండా గాక అపార్ట్ ఫ్రమ్ ద డిలేడ్ వాక్ దెర్ ఈస్ ఎ డిఫైల్డ్ వాక్ ది అథారిటీస్ వేర్ ద వన్స్ హూ వేర్ ప్రెసింగ్ దీస్ పోర్ అండ్ నీడి ఇన్ ద టైమ్ ఆఫ్ ఇజ్రాయల్ లైట్స్ అండ్ ద కైండ్ ఆఫ్ walk that they were having is a defiled walk they didn't even come back to me in amos chapter 2 which we read last year, last week amos chapter 2 verse 7 he say amos grandam rendu adhyayam 7 vachanamlo we read mari adhikarulu etuvanti nadaka nadustunnaru var israel re israel adhikarle var nadaka etla undanta devini parishuddha naamunu avamana parichu reetiga apavitra parichu reetiga 
it was a walk that was profaning the holy name of god why was it they were not engaging in some kind of a, a radical sin that we might call sin but simple things that they were doing they were the pant after the dust of the earth on the head of the poor they were just ignoring the poor they turn aside the way of the meek they were ignoring the helpless or meek and humble and a man and his father will go into the onto the same maid to profane my holy name so is this defiled walk mar apavitramaina nadaka manam chustunnam ituvanti nadaka devudu naravataniki tana prajalanu pilchukoledandi god has not called us to walk to such a walk of defiling the name of god profaning the name of god and finally god has not walk called us or them the children of israel to a destructive walk we see the destruction that was brought upon the children of israel they who were delivered from the land of egypt as slaves were sold again to the slavery to their own destruction kada banisalaga ye aigupta desham nunchi varu vidipimpa badi vaagdana deshaniki nadipimpa baddaro moshe varu tho cheppin reethi gane నీవు నా ఆజ్ఞలు తిరస్కరించు దినాన్న నిన్ను వేరే అన్య దేశానికి బానిసలుగా అమ్మివేతును అని అన్నారు అది నెరవేర్పబడు రీతిగా వారు అసీరియా దేశానికి వారి నాశనం కొలది నాశనకరమైన నడకలోనికి వారు నడిపింపబడినట్టుగా మనం చూస్తున్నాం ఇటువంటి నడకలు కాక మరి ఎటువంటి నడకలు దేవుడు నడవటానికి నిన్ను నన్ను పిలిచారు ఐఎమ్ జస్ట్ జీరో ఇంగ్ ఇన్ ఆన్ ద కైండ్ ఆఫ్ వాక్ యాజ్ Amos chapter 3 is going to have us bring to scrutiny our walk with God. Devinito nadaka yalagundi ee samacharam ee dinallo anedi parikshinchukuntaniki devudu ee maatalu maniki munduncharu. And uh, the kind of walk that God wants us to walk is first and foremost a daytime walk. Velugulo nadavataniki ayina pilichukunnaranta. In Romans chapter 13 verse uh, 14 i suppose let's read that verse romil krabina patrika 13th vachanam lo 13th adhyayam lo etuvanti nadaka nadaka nadavataniki tana prajalaina ninnu nannu mari enchukunnaran cheppi manam chuste let us walk honestly as in the day not in rioting and drunkenness not in chambering and wantonness not in strife and envy తెలుగులో ఒక అల్లరితో కూడిన ఆటపాటలైనను మత్తైనను లేకయు కామ విలాసములైన పోకిరి చేస్తలైన లేకయు కలహమైన మత్సరమైన లేకయు పగటి ఎందు నడుచున్నట్టు మర్యాదగా నడుచుకుందుము దెర్ ఈస్ ఎ వాక్ ఇన్ ద లైట్ దట్ గాడ్ హెస్ కాల్డ్ అస్ దిస్ వర్స్ ఈస్ నాట్ గోయింగ్ టు ఎక్స్పాండ్ ద సో మచ్ బట్ దిస్ ఈస్ ద హై టైమ్ టు వాక్ దిస్ దిస్ వాక్ ఇది చాలా సమయం అయింది ఈ నడక మన అవసరం అందుకనే పన్నెండో వచ్చిన నుంచి అడిగితే రాత్రి చాలా గడిచి పగలు సమీపంగా ఉంది నోయింగ్ దట్ ద టైమ్ నౌ ఈస్ హై టైమ్ ఫర్ అస్ టు అవేక్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ స్లీప్ ఫర్ అవర్ సాల్వేషన్ ఈజ్ నియర్ అర్ దాన్ వీ హ్యావ్ బిలీవ్డ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ హై టైమ్ వీ నీడ్ టు వాక్ ద డే టైమ్ వాక్ ద డే టైమ్ వాక్ ఈజ్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ మచ్ మోర్ డీటెయిల్ ఇన్ ఫస్ట్ జాన్ మరి మొదటి యోహాన్ పత్రిక మొదట అధ్యాయము ఆరు ఏడు వచనాల్లో ఉదయ కాలపు నడక పగటిలో నడక ఎట్లా ఉంటుందో మనకి చక్కగా ప్రస్తావించబడుతుంది పగటిలో నడక నడిచేటప్పుడు రాత్రి క్రియలు చేయమంట వి డోంట్ డూ ద డీడ్స్ ఆఫ్ ద నైట్ ఇన్ ద టైమ్ ఆఫ్ ద డే ఎవ్రీబడి ఈస్ సీయింగ్ గాడ్ ఈస్ సీయింగ్ యూ అండ్ ఐఆర్ సీయింగ్ వాట్ ఈస్ యాక్చువల్లీ హ్యాపనింగ్ అండ్ సో వీ వాక్ సర్కమ్ స్పెక్ట్లీ వీ వాక్ seeing our sin as it is not saying it as something else or an excuse and that's why in first john chapter 1 verse 7 it says and if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanses us from all sin we see sin as it is and we confess it that's the walk in the light in fact in verse 5 onwards it explains god is light and him there is no darkness if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not the truth and in verse 8 it says if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves if we say that my walk is good we deceive ourselves 
and the truth is not in us we see the sin as god sees it and we say yes lord this is my portion of walking not in the light but in darkness and would agree to god and the moment we agree we read this promise verse as well that the blood of jesus christ cleanseth us from all sin and unrighteousness and not only it cleanses us it consecrates us to walk circumspectly mari epudaithe mana paapamu pagati lo nadichinattu oppukuni natlaithe aina raktamu mananni kadigi shuddhuluga chesi mari teermanam tho koodina nadaka loniki mananni nadipisiddu anta the second kind of walk that god would have us walk the moment he cleanses us our sin is a distinctive walk ప్రత్యేకమైన నడక నడవటానికి మనల్ని పిలుచుకున్నారు దేవుడు నాట్ యాజ్ ద వరల్డ్ వాక్స్ ద వరల్డ్ కెన్ కంటిన్యూ టు వాక్ ఇగ్నరెంట్ ఆఫ్ వాట్ ఈస్ అరౌండ్ ఇన్ ద సొసైటీ బట్ యూ అండ్ ఐ వాక్ సర్కమ్ స్పెక్లీ ఇన్ ఫ్యాక్ట్ వి రీడ్ ఇన్ రోమన్స్ చాప్టర్ సిక్స్ వర్స్ ఫోర్ ద కైండ్ ఆఫ్ న్యూనెస్ ఆఫ్ వాక్ దట్ యూ అండ్ ఐ ఆర్ కాల్ టు వి ఐడెంటిఫై అవర్ సెల్స్ విత్ క్రైస్ట్ అండ్ వి బిగిన్ టు walk in the newness of life in romans chapter 6 verse 4 therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the father even so we also should walk in the newness of life there is a distinctiveness of the walk of a christian a christian is observed he is a walking bible is being read every day and until they read and see the reality of christ nobody wants to read the living word living bible god wants you and i to be the walking epistles who would walk his word in the newness of life having been consecrated to live as epistles of christ our walk is distinctive our walk is distinct different from the people of the world people of the world show indifference to sin but we see sin as sin as god sees it and we confess to be consecrated to walk in newness not in the oldness and so we come to walk in this distinctive walk and finally we walk in this dynamic walk that god calls us to walk you know it's not impossible to walk with god in fact sometimes we say oh if you and i have to walk with god you and i have to leave everything and go into full time ministry or do some ministry of god as a missionary go away into islands or into the wilderness or into the unreached areas not so there is a man who walked with god just like you and i are with families and with day to day chores in genesis chapter 5 verse 22 he not he didn't walk with god just one day in fact he didn't walk with god for one month or one week or one year he walked with god how many years in genesis chapter 5 verse 22 we read and enoch walked with god after he begat methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters he was not an alien to this world he was living right in the society he had sons and daughters children like you and me yet he was able to walk with god dynamic walking meaning it's not going to be easy walk dynamic i said because it's going to be adventurous but god is going to be with us to be in that adventure to walk with us in the ups and downs in the difficulties and in the prosperity god is going to be with us to give us that eventful walk adventurous walk and that's the walk that god has called god's people for and now you and i might say okay tomorrow you and i are going to walk differently it's going to be like so different so because you heard this message no <laughs> it's going to be the same kind of walk and same kind of challenges tomorrow but how is it that god would have us have this different daytime and distinctive and dynamic walk with him and uh, god is not asking us to manufacture that walk nor is he 
expecting that you and I can do that walk. But he certainly wanting to have us come back to doing these as part of the applications. You know, the first thing that you and I begin to see in the call that Amos is giving to the children of Israel and that time and to you and me today, as we read, I was, as I was studying this book, I was fondly reminded of this song, which is called Ancient Words. Ancient Words, ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. These words of God, though ancient as they are, they are ever true. They change you and me and they are going to impart to us life. And that's what we come to. Amos, when you look at as a brief survey quickly, as part of the application that Amos is giving, he's first asking us to fear God, which is what we read today in Amos uh, chapter 3. We read, when the lion roars, will we not fear, is the question that Amos had. and. Uh, as he says this, the first response as God's people, as you and I, need to take from the book of Amos is, certainly we are to fear God. Amos chapter 3 verse 8, he says, The lion hath roared, will, who will not fear? The Lord God hath spoken. Amos couldn't contain it, but he had to prophesy it. Even though he was to the king and to the authorities, to this evil generation that were going to be sold out, yet he didn't step back in prophesying. So is it that you and I are to fear God more than people around or men. And the moment you and I fear God, this is what would follow through. The first one as a response to the word that we hear, that the kind of walk that God wants us to you and I to have is first to fear him. Learn to grow in this godly fear reverential fear that we might fear him more than the people around. Sometimes you and I go back into this, as morning brother was saying, wilderness in our workplaces, as uh, we go back into our daily chores in our neighborhoods, in our places. At times we take too much thought about what the people would think, what our colleagues would think if I just say something about God, if I give the gospel. That might cause us not to respond rightly. So, and so we have to learn to fear God as the first response. The second one that we see right from Amos as part of application. In Amos chapter 5 verse 14, which is one of the key applications that God is calling us to, is seek Him. In Amos chapter 5 verse 6, sorry, first. Amos chapter 5 verse 6. The fear should result us in seeking Him more. Seeking Him. And the moment you and I seek him, we would live for him, live like him, live the life that he gives to us. As we seek God, we would live, not die. These children of Israel were destroyed and perished because they didn't seek him. They sought the idols which didn't give life. And so they couldn't live out. They couldn't walk. And God is calling us to not only fear him, but to seek him. Not just seek him, seek good. In verse 14 he says, seek good and not evil that you may live. You know, the God that we serve, the God that has called is a good God. Sometimes I wonder when it comes to spending time with him, God is all knowing, God is all loving, God is all good. Yet we take so much of burden in not wanting to spend time with him. We would want to spend time with our gadgets. We would want to spend time with our friends. We would want to spend time with maybe browsing or whatever it might be. How is it that he is so good yet? Because there is sin in us, sometimes it is not easy to spend time with him. But if only we realize that it is he who is the source of all goodness, the one who is good, which is why Jesus says, do you call me good? Only God is good, he says. And when we seek good, that is, when we want to do right, 
it is god whom we will seek and the moment we want to do right and seek god we would live we would live what god wants us to live and not only we are to seek him seek good we are to seek his word amos chapter 8 verse 12 we are, we are so familiar with this verse chapter 11 and amos chapter 8 verse 11 and 12 amos grandham lo devudu tana prajalu aina neevu nenu elagu spandinchali ee ayanto nadavataniki annattu ayanaku bayapadalani mottamadata ant maatrame kaaka ayanu vedakalani ayana manchini vedakalani amos 5 6 amos 5 14 lo ayana bayalparcharu ant maatrame kaaka ayana vakyamnu vedakal there is a famine that is coming you know amos pronounced to the people of god his word but they didn't even bother to receive it and lo and behold they were taken captive and there is no god's word anymore for these captive people today you and i live in an age where there is so much of the so called word of god you turn to youtube channels you turn to resources online you turn to tv channels there is you turn to radio t- radio channels you have so much of god's word but so little of the voice of god so little of the truth of god so little as though there is this famine for hearing the very sweet voice of god and when god speaks you know aina mata leellani eena chestadanta it produces life that we would not live the same so he is a child of god he is is going to be filled with life to live out his word god wants to receive that life from his word to live out his word god is not asking you and i you and i have no ability to live the kind of righteousness that god wants you and i to live but he is willing to give to us if only we seek him if only we pursue after him if only we seek after his word he says seek his word in verse 12 the last part he says they run to and fro to seek the word of the lord and shall not find it what sad state of affairs they were sold into destruction where will they find god's word and god's word was coming to them they were not wanting to seek him seek good and seek his word now quickly in closing apart from fearing him apart from seeking him then you would know what it is to walk with him then you will be able to walk the kind of walk that god wants the distinctive walk the dynamic walk and the daytime walk that would be yours and my portion not only so i'm blown away when amos concludes in amos chapter 9 you know what god's word does it not only gives us life in amos chapter 9 verse 11 the application that amos gives is that he will build us you know that fallen tabernacle of david is what god says though it is fallen it would be raised up from ruins it would be built up god's going to build us up to respond rightly you know in that building process what god does is he is going to let christ be formed in us Paul was laboring this with regards to Galatians in chapter 4 verse 19 Galatians to the church Galatia he says I labor again that Christ be formed in you you know when Christ is formed in us as we fear him as we seek him as we walk with him treasuring the experiences in the heart that God opens to us God's going to use his word to build us up and as he's going to build in uh, Acts chapter 20 verse 32 Paul says I commend you as he is leaving the parting words that he says to the Ephesian elders he would not see them again and he says I commend you to the word of God which is able to build you up and as it builds you up you know Christ is going to be formed as Christ is formed in us you and I would respond just as Christ responds when you see injustice when you see unrighteousness the eyes of christ which responds to injustice and unrighteousness would become our eyes would become our heart and you and i would walk worthy of this high calling christ would be lived out of us and that's the calling that god is giving to us 
as God's people to come walk with him, to seek him, to fear him, and to let him build you and I. He's going to build the tabernacle of David. That's the hope that God has given to the children of Israel. May that be your portion, that Christ be formed, that Christ would be real, that as we see, live in this world that is so far from God, we would respond rightly to the injustice. We would respond rightly to the ungodly things, be it poverty, be it slavery, be it abortion, be it homelessness, be it needy. Our eyes would see what Christ sees and our hearts would beat what Christ's heart and God's heart beats, that we might do exactly what Christ would do. And that would be the precious privilege of God's people to be restored back to what God wants us to have a life mimicking Him in this calling that is given to walk with Him. Mari Devudu, Tana Prajala in Israel, Tanto Nadichina Pudu, Devunik Bai Pade Varga, Ainaku, Aina Vedike Varga, Aina Vakyam Vedike Varga, Mari Ainache Katabade Varga, Tadupari, Christu Arlo, Paripunamai, Christu Hrudim, Christ Kanulu, Chuchi, Ritiga, Mana Jutalu, the Mana Kanulu, Mana Hrudial, Chuchi, Spandinche, Ritiga, Marie Prate Anyaimu, Eprate Aviniti, Mana Chutundo, Vatiki Tagina Spandana, Christu, Manalontuna, A Christu, Prabuar, Spandinche, Anugunamlo, Mana Jutal, Nadipim Pabarta, Kanakati, Krupolo, Prabu Mana Nikati, Ain to Nadupin Churitiga, Manjutalni, Balapachunagaka, Pradhan Cheskunam. Loving Father, we thank you, we praise you for this precious privilege you gave to come to such a glorious God who longs to walk with a sinful one like me and us. Who are we, Lord, that you make a covenant with us, you long to walk with us. You want us to seek you and be built by you, that Christ be formed in us. Father, I pray that uh, our lives would be brought into the reality of living out your word, letting Christ be real more and more as days go by. Lord, we thank you, we praise you for your heart towards us and to thy people of Israel before as well. Thanking you for your word. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.